drive from Haputale will lead you to Addisham, a monastery run by Benedictine monks. Wrapped in the tranquility of the misty hills, Addisham bungalow attracts every eye that falls on it. The pages of history reveal that the creator of this enthralling place is Sir Thomas Lister Villiers. Sir Thomas Lister Villiers was born in 1869 in Addisham, an ancient village which lies in the hollow of the Kent countryside. He was the son of Reverend Prebendary Henry Montagu Villiers, who belonged to Clarendon family. He was also the grandson of Lord John Russell, who was twice the Prime Minister of Britain. Sir Thomas Lister Villiers gained his education at Sherborne School. After completing his studies, he chose to come to Ceylon as a trainee on Albert the Estate, Bhagwan Talawa. Thus, a young man with just ten pounds on his pocket began building his life here in Ceylon. In 1896, Thomas Villiers married Evelyn Hope, a daughter of the planter W. H. Walk of Kundole North. The wedding took place in the Holy Trinity Church, Nuarelia. Evelyn Hope was a keen painter, and her painting decorate addition walls even at present. In 1900, with the purchase of Dicko Estate, together with his brother Godfrey, Sir Thomas became a proprietor planter. As he succeeded along in his career as a planter, he was also appointed Justice of Peace. After an 18-year-long journey as a planter, Sir Thomas joined George Stewart's in 1905. and was admitted as a partner in July 1906 he was a senior partner of George Stewart's from 1928 to 1948 sir thomas villiers also played a leading role in politics becoming a member of the colombo municipal council in which he represented the fort ward from 1907 to 1920 The youth who stepped into Ceylon converted into a man of knowledge and a great service and returned to the United Kingdom at the age of 82. There he entered his second marriage with a Ceylonese called Marjorie Kate who nursed Sir Thomas throughout an illness he suffered. She also spent a part of her life as his secretary before uniting with him in marriage. She was a daughter of Edwin Kate of Colombo. Wedding took place in the fashionable London Church of St Paul's, Knightsbridge, where Sir Thomas's father had once been a vicar. Sir Thomas was always aware of his responsibilities and thus was in touch with the directors of George Stewart's until his very last days. In the late 50s, Sir Thomas wrote a letter to the Wages Commission mentioning that it was very necessary to introduce weekly wages in Ceylon. After enjoying a healthy and a vigorous life, Sir Thomas Villiers passed away on December 21st in 1959. The funeral service took place at St Paul's Knights Bridge while the cremation was held at Pewlery Vale. Lady Villiers also died in London in 1964 at the age of 60. The Villiers presence in Ceylon concluded, but their pleasant memories and the life story is carved in every stone that holds up in the Addisham bungalow in Haputale. It was while he was chairman of George Stewart's that Sir Thomas commenced building his dream home in the country. He selected a peaceful site at Haputale surrounded by beautiful forest called Tangamalai which means golden hills. The piece of land was alienated because of its 5000 feet elevation. Yet it was not a barrier for Sir Thomas. A road was cut through the forest to pave the way to reach the land which commanded views across hills and valleys and the highest mountain ranges of Ceylon. On a clear day a sightseer will be privileged to view Totapola Kanda, Haggala, Piduru Talagala the Udapusella range of mountains known as the Sleeping Warrior, Diyatalava Army Camp, Namunukula and numerous other mountains which stretch out for miles on end. The building and garden are on 10 acres on land which formed a part of the forest reserve. Cutting the site in preparation for the building commenced in 1929. 
The house was designed in the Tudor style on the lines of Blades Castle in Kent. With stout granite walls of locally quarried stone, long narrow turret windows and chimneys. It looked in every detail an Elizabethan country mansion flowing in the memories of Sir Thomas Villiers's well-loved home in Kent and his childhood memories. The house gave an onlooker a sense of solidity, permanence and stability. Sir Thomas Villiers spared no expense to ensure that his country home was luxurious in its appointments. The roof was covered with flat Burma teak shingles. The doors, windows, paneling, staircase and floors were also of Burma teak. The spacious room of the house contained handsome fireplaces to keep the inhabitants warm. The wind turbines fixed on the roof sent cold wind down to the fireplaces, amazingly heating up the room. The Regency clock, though it has stopped ticking, stands in splendor on the mantelpiece of the fireplace with its gleaming fire irons. These steps pave the way to elaborate pillared lending on the main staircase adorned by portraits of his relatives, the Clarendons and the Dukes of Bedford. The rooms of the house are many in numbers. The four stout English oaks add grandeur to the house. It is said that Indian masons were brought down and employed to do the stone work of the building. The rooms of the house are many in numbers. The rooms occupied by Sir Thomas Villiers and Lady Villiers, the Blue Room and the Horse Show Room are beautifully done and spacious. This is the room of Sir Thomas Villiers which is preserved in every detail.
Villiers imported fine period furniture, linen, carpets, porcelain, silver and glassware from England for his home. An entire wing of the building commands a breathtaking panoramic view of the picturesque Uwe Valley. The drawing room which is open to the visitors has been preserved through the many years that passed. David Painter's study of Sir Thomas looks down from above the William Faux furniture, even if the Lancashire broad looms on the chairs and Axminister carpets have aged gently. <laughs> 